1985. The year would bring new coke, the discovery of the wreck of the Titanic, and Live Aid. However, just under the surface, the threat from behind the Iron Curtain is ever-present. The smallest spark could light the start of World War III. This would be the year Britain took action to defend herself should war come to her shores. Lionheart, part of the NATO manoeuvres in Germany, are preparing for a mock enemy invasion. More than 130,000 British troops are taking part in the exercise. In 1984, the British Armed Forces took part in Exercise Lionheart. It tested the British, American and their European allies against what a Soviet thrust into West Germany could look like if the Cold War got hot. There was still a question that remained unanswered. What would happen in the event of a Soviet attack on the United Kingdom itself? How would the armed forces protect the nation? In September 1985, that very question would be answered by the MOD. Speaking in the House of Lords on the 21st of March 1985, Lord Trefgood described the objective of exercise Brave Defender. The aims of the exercise are to test plans and procedures for the ground defence of vital establishments, liaison between the military and civil authorities over military home defence matters, and to demonstrate the government's commitment to home defence. It is planned that about 65,000 servicemen, both regular and reservist, who would have home defence role on mobilisation will take part. The Territorial Army, including the Home Service Force, will have an important role to play in the exercise. There will also be some United States forces involved in the exercise. Brave Defender would be the UK's biggest home defence exercise since 1945 and would take place from the 2nd to the 13th of September. Manpower from the BAOR, British Army of the Rhine, was to be drafted in to play the enemy force that consisted of a thousand men, as well as regular and reserve SAS units and paratroopers who would take on the role of pseudo Spetsnaz and VDV for the exercise. As well as mock air attacks that were carried out by the RAF and the USAF, all in all there was a force of around 4,500 that would put the defence of key points across the UK to the test. The two key threats portrayed during the exercise were outlined in a Ministry of Defence First Impressions document from October 1985. The primary was the use of small parties of enemy special forces to attack elected targets which would be vitally important to national and NATO military capabilities. The level of enemy activity was deliberately sustained at an unnaturally high level so that all those being exercised were fully tested. The secondary threat was the use of small-scale conventional air attacks on exercise key points by enemy aircraft carrying high explosive ordnance. There was no simulation of nuclear or chemical attack. The exercise would also see the Home Service Force used in a major defence exercise for the first time. The force was created along the same lines as the Home Guard of the Second World War, but the difference between the HSF and the Home Guard was that instead of calling for civilian volunteers and training them from the ground up into soldiers, the Home Service Force would consist of men aged between the ages of 20 and 60 and they would need to have at least two years of previous regular or reserve military service or military cadet or police service. This meant that HSF members would already have a basic understanding of things like drill, field craft and weapons handling. This would allow them to be integrated into their home defence role much quicker. HSF adverts in local papers boasted taglines like Who'll mine the shop? Can your country depend on you? These adverts showed images of HSF men next to telephone exchanges and bridges, which outlined one of the main roles of the HSF and the Exercise Brave Defender itself. Key Point Defence During the exercise, the defensive capabilities of the HSF, regular and reserve forces were tested at key areas such as army barracks, airfields and supply depots throughout the country. Over the weekend of the 7th to 8th of September 1985, 170 key points were manned and ready to be defended from enemy infiltration and sabotage. Accompanied by service chiefs, Mr. Heseltine arrived at key point 504, otherwise known as the fueling depot at RAF Northolt. 
outside CND kept vigil in protest against what they see as a provocative, sinister and unnecessary exercise. Inside, weekend soldiers from the newly formed Home Service Force kept watch for intruders, two of whom arrived right on cue for a staged incident. Not all the battles have been won so easily. The HSF were completely fooled yesterday by an SAS microlight plane, which dropped a smoke bomb by the control tower. But the defence secretary seemed pleased by what he sees as a cheap but effective form of emergency defence. One of the key points being defended was Biggin Hill Airport in Kent. The former Royal Air Force Base had played a key role during the Battle of Britain in 1940 and had been an operational RAF airfield up until 1958. In 85, the airfield was still being used by the RAF as an officer and aircrew selection centre. During Brave Defender, the airfield was under the protection of a force consisting of three platoons from the Adult Recruit Training Company of the Guards Depot at Purbright and 25 regular soldiers of the Welsh Guards. Platoon Sergeant Brian Eager explains the Guards' role that September. The three platoons used were each placed with different tasks. One was exterior patrol and barbed wire installation. The other platoon was a QR platoon for a quick reaction whilst my platoon, number five, was tasked to build a system of fortified positions built with sandbags, and this was our high point because stagging on was largely monotonous, punctuated with brief periods of high intensity. Major Michael Senior told the Seven Oaks Chronicle newspaper about one of the large enemy actions that the men under his command had to deal with during the exercise. Between 10pm and 2.30am Wednesday morning, we were subjected to at least five well thought out and coordinated attacks. The Chronicle added to this by saying, Members of the Territorial Army's SAS broke through the security net by arriving in official staff cars and impersonating senior officers. The official looking party, compromising a major general and his ADC as a photographer policeman and a driver, successfully bluffed their way in and sabotaged an operations centre. Smoke bombs were let off, and a suspect briefcase thought to contain a bomb was left behind, and later blown up. This type of subterfuge and hit-and-run tactics were conducted by the enemy forces on Brave Defender throughout the country. As well as this, the practising of bomb disposal and liaison between the military and civilian police forces were tested during the exercise for the first time. The Ministry of Defence First Impressions document said this on the effectiveness of Brave Defender. The exercise has been judged a success. The revised concept for a military home defence has been validated. There is now much better understanding of the nature of the threat to vital installations in this country and of the plans we have to counter it. At least base practising like this, uh, it's better than being thrown it deep and at least if it does ever happen then uh, well, I feel confident that I could defend. A second Brave Defender exercise was planned by the MOD in 1988 to take place in 1993. But, with the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989, the Cold War thawed out. Thankfully, the lessons learned from Brave Defender never had to be put to the test for real. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you again in the next one.